that's the time. 1.30 in the morning. And while the island sleeps, we're going fishing. Now, we're off to a bad start actually. I've just arrived at the car parking area and realised I left my harness behind for the camera. Um, <coughs> so, we won't be doing any harness, camera harness stuff. We will be only using the tripod because fortunately I have brought the tripod now. We've got a bag here, we've got a net, so we're going to take this little net with this. If you can see that, it probably might be too dark for this. Let me uh, put a bit more light on the situation. Yeah, we've got um, a net, we're going to get some, a bit of shrimp down there while we're at it for bait. And we've got our rods and stuff in the car. So I'm going to get set up, make my way down there because it's quite a long walk and climb. And uh, we'll speak on the way down or on the beach. Right, we are heading down to one of our shore marks and we are going to be after bream. We've brought two rods and reels, we've got a couple of beach casters, a couple of multipliers, got a spare fix ball in the bag as well just in case. Now, I always bring two rods because this is quite a long walk and climb to the marks and if one of your rods fails on you you want to have a backup for sure coming all this way so anyway we're going to be like I say hopefully targeting black bream and cooch's bream and a very small chance of catching a gilt head and an even smaller chance of catching a white bream um, we might catch some red bream as well. I have caught red bream here before, so we'll see how we get on. We're going to head down, and we're going to go and get some bait first. I have brought some squid with me, but um, I want to pick up a bit of ragworm, maybe some crab, while we're down here on our way around. And uh, we'll see you when we're down there. Right, well, we've made it down the beach, and as you can see, we're on this stony ground. Perfect for finding ragworm. So I'm going to be looking for that bit of that first. Uh, tide's got a little way to come in yet before we're going to catch much, so uh, spend probably half an hour or so just getting some bait. And then we'll get fishing, but I won't bore you with the bait hunting. Obviously, it takes time. We'll see you when we're actually on the fishing mark itself. Right, well, we're at the spot. Now, I've had to hash this together a bit with the lights. I don't know how well it's going to go with the videoing tonight because I've never used this camera and I've kind of just put some powerful torches. You can see like the spotlight area. So anyway, we'll make do with what we've got. We'll try our best. Uh, dawn will be coming in ooh, quite a long time, four or five hours. And we possibly will still be here. We'll see how we go. We might not. Turns out we catch really. So anyway, there's our rag. You'll see there that it's, if you can see that, that it is absolutely packed. We filled that pretty much with ragworm. There's quite a weight there. Put a little bit of green weed on top for later when I thin it out. So I've got something to keep them in, but um, yeah, I'd stop putting any more in because they would start to climb out the top. So we've got plenty of rag. Let me just loosen the lid on that. Hold on. Make sure that there's oxygen getting in there. And we've got a box of squid. What I'll do is I'll take the squid, I'll use it, I'll defrost it, I'll use the squid and I'll take back anything after one trip from frozen and you can reuse it. And I actually find sometimes a little bit better once it's gone back again, but after that I wouldn't I wouldn't refuse it, I only do it once. And then another little thing I brought with me was it's that Benito we had. Well I kept it to eat and the head went to the crab pots and the belly meat, I've just kept some strips of belly meat. For bait, so we'll, you can try that as well. It'll be something different. You see, we never caught it. And then up here, I've got a bag just with some shore crab in. I just picked up a handful of shore crab just in case. I might try for um, gilt head and that. So I wanted some crab. Now I brought a whole wadge of torches with me just to see what would work best with the. Uh... Like we got this thing. This is insane. This torch. It's got such a sp spread on it. It's actually not bad. Can have disco as well. Disco. So yeah, that one's not bad. For two quid, 
pretty good torch. I can't even look at it, it's so bright. Some kind of weird LED, like yellow strip in it. And then there's this thing, which is probably not going to do much. Let's put all the lights on, that's all of them. So yeah, that really doesn't do a lot. But once it's on, once we get it on a fish, it'll be fine. You can't adjust the zoom on that. And we've got spare torch, so I think that one's probably the one we're going to need. Yep, we'll try that. We'll make do. So capturing the actual fishing action with the rods might be a bit tricky, but we'll figure something out. So I've got a couple of torches anyway, and you always bring, I always bring an extra torch or two, because down here, if you drop your torch, you're going to have a serious problem finding your way back again. Batteries. Because we will have to move off here at a certain point. Like I said, we get cut off if we stay here too long. Okay. So what have we got? Well, we've got a space wallet and in here I've I pre-made like uh, two paternoster kind of style it's like two beads and a swivel in between I've got two or three I'm going to use the twos tonight just two hooks and that way I can put um, squid on one hook ragworm on the other it helps to save your ragworm bait to start with but at the same time using a bit of ragworm there's always a chance of catching a red mullet or a flatfish or anything else so I do like to use a bit of ragworm and the squid for the bream as well, but bream will take ragworm, so. But at the same time, we might use crab as well, try a little bit of crab. So we've got a whole selection of hooks, usually up to about size 1 0 in there, that's good enough for bream because I've only got small mouths, swivels, beads, and a bit of extra 30 pound line just to be able to make those paternosters up again. The traces will be less, but the, the main paternoster has to be strong because where you tie knots and beads, it's weak, obviously. Um, I brought this, this is the thing that we had the other day. Um, looks lights if they still work, they're very old, they might not work. And some bigger hooks, I've got some 4 O's and that in there, just in case we decide we want to target anything bigger. Um, let me see if I've got... Yeah. Right, also bring a, I always bring a plug, there's a plug there, just in case any bass show up. And I've also got that eel rubber eel as well to use. Just had a bit of a coughing fit there, but not to worry. Brought down the trusty bottles of water. Always bring water in places like this. Make sure you drink most of it or all of it before you leave or tip it out. You don't want to carry it all the way back up there. I mean, 300 feet or so. so. It's not too bad. It's not like a mount, uh, cliff, cliff climb. Not like some of my old marks. This is more of a cliff path walk. And we've got a selection of weights up to five ounce and spare lines and that. That's it. That's all we got in there really. I say most of it was to do with the camera and and the bait. So hopefully when we go back we'll uh, won't have a lot of that with us. And like I say we've got a couple of beach casters with a couple of multipliers. There's that one. And there's this one. This is probably my oldest beach caster actually. This has been such a good rod. It was pretty expensive at the time. It's uh Procaster, it's a, a, I think it was designed by Paul Kerry, this one. Yeah, it was. It's die hour anyway. But, um, yeah, this, this rod, I bought this years ago. I mean, we're talking years ago. Very first fish I caught on it, coal fish. Biggest coal fish I ever had. Kind of weird, used to catch the odd coal fish now and again. I haven't seen them in years, probably because they're getting climate change and all the rest of it. But, um, so yeah, we've got these two for distance casting. Loaded up with 25 pound, that one's got 23 pound. Um, I used to use shock leader and that, but to be honest, the ground's very mixed here, and if you snag the bottom, you're pretty much going to lose that anyway. So, I just go with the 25, and as long as you don't shock your casts and you cast smoothly, you can still get one hell of a cast or a pretty decent cast without losing your, your uh, leads and stuff. Right, well, I'm going to get set up. Like I say, I'm just waiting for this tide to come off a bit because it is away from the rocks. And all that happens is your, your line will sag and it will rub the beach area and you'll either pick up weed along that beach bit or you'll just damage your line. So it's always better just to wait for that tide to come up. But I've got to set up. I've got to bait up. And then we'll be back. Oh, I almost forgot. I've got a few sandwiches as well. Egg sandwiches tonight. Oh, and I threw a float in as well. I don't really ever use floats, but... There is that odd moment, you know, where you suddenly decide I'm going to stick a float on. 
it happens. And of course, just a raincoat, but I don't think it's going to rain because um, this is more to block out any wind or cold if it gets up. It's not too bad at the moment, it's still summer, but in the, in the winter I fish here as well and uh, sometimes you have to light a fire because it gets so cold. Right, well, we've got our torque pattern to set up. We've got ragworm at the top. Normally I put it at the bottom, but I put the wire hook at the bottom uh, at the top, so I put the ragworm on that. You never know for flatties and things, but it doesn't really matter. I've got a little cast hook at the bottom, a bit stronger with a bigger bit of squid on. And then down to a five ounce lead, which will bail out on that rod. The other rod, I've actually changed my mind on that one. I was going to do the same, but instead I decided to go with a single hook. Decided to go with a single hook, which is there, as you can possibly see. You've got your weight at the bottom down there. It goes up to two swivels, a bead, so the uh, hook with a crab bait on it. I'm going to try for a gilt head or anything else that will take crab. And obviously, when the fish pulls it, it'll pull direct to the line, it won't pull the weight. Hopefully there'll be something that'll take it, and then later on I might change back to the two hooks. But the tide is getting very close now, so I think we can probably belt the lines out. So we'll do that and get fishing. Right, let me. I'll put the worm bait out first. Just this one. getting bites on the right rod unless it's yep I'm getting bites on that right rod this is the squid and ragworm rod the thing is with bream you can normally just let them hook themselves when you do get a um, big run though you still want to be on your rod yeah that's that's bream Unless it's a little pouch on swivel weight. I don't think we got it. I don't think it was that big though. Let's uh, we'll check. It is actually a, li a little pelt. Quick to show you it. I want to get it back into the water as quick as possible because pout don't like coming out of the water. Behind this light, that light is so strong it's blinding me. There it is. One lovely little pout. Only a baby. I'm going to put him back. Taking on the squid. The pout will pretty much eat anything. They can be a right pain in some places. Right, let's get the line back out again. Let's just hope it's not all pelt tonight. I don't mind catching a few pelt, but sometimes, like I say, they can be a right pain. It's a bit like dogfish. Well, we're getting bites again, so... I'm going to wait with this one. I'm going to let it hook itself, I think. That's a fish. I think you might have been hooked. Yep, slack line. There we go, first green. Not a huge one, but it's a green. Trouble is, with that light, doesn't it glow, eh? Let me uh, switch this off and just use the other light. There we go. It's probably better. So, first bream of the night. 
Ryan right, gets one on hooked. So I was just going to check the crab rod, and the other rod started bouncing around all over the place. Well, we've got another bream, very, very small one. But this time, we've got a different one. We've got a cooches, baby cooches bream. Probably have to do the same again with the camera because it'll probably glare too much. Let me, um, it's just there. Let me turn this light off. So there we go. Baby cooches bream. Right, let's get this back into the water, and we will go out again. That again was on that was on the squid. Well, it's a mix of that one. That was a squid and ragworm. But this really is a small fish. That's a real tiddler. We're getting a few bites again on the small rod. The crab rod I actually brought in, and I put a bit of squid on. I, I had a bit of squid left after packing up. I just shoved on it a bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> we're going to move in a minute because this tide is big and it's coming in real fast and I think I would normally stop at another mark on the way around but we'll see like I say with it coming in this fast you've got to be real careful cheers 4.35 see you can't even see that because of the the glare again if I Oh no, it's still glaring. Maybe it's uh, maybe my lens is getting damp. Hold on. Try that. No, it still glares. Never mind. Anyway, it's 4:30, and although it's still dark, you can definitely see it's there is a lighter. It is a lighter dark, you might say. about congas, check this one out. <laughs> you do get these little tiny congas down here. And there's one of them. It was sitting on the other line. It had eaten the, um, the slightly larger bit of squid. Again, I'll try and do that so you get a bit of view. Right, I'm going to get him off, get him back. And we're going to move. I don't know if you can see that down there, but there's... Uh, some pollock and I did see it's probably gone by now but I think it was a rosely and that's pollock again down there water seems to be a bit milky for some reason don't see anything else it's good to see baby pollock because we used to see thousands of baby pollock around our shores all the time in the shallows and over the years they just seem to have vanished, but this year there does seem to be a few young ones. Although we're not seeing any big pollock, which is very unfortunate. But definitely seeing little ones, so maybe there's a bit of hope for the future. So we just put one rod out with uh, ragworm and squid on. And the other rod has got a strip of bonito on. That's something I never thought I'd say. So, just so I land the fish, the battery goes flat. It's normal, so quick change battery. There we go, it's just a power. Not a bad size one. Not a giant, but not bad. Let me just check that the, uh, we'd be able to turn the torch off soon because we've got daylight coming. 
So let me just uh, do that so you get a better view of it. There we go. Right, let me get it off and get it back into the water. There we go. Feels a bit more green actually. is a green. And that's a better one. You like it? There you go. Come around and make sure that light's not glaring it again. Yeah it is. That is a nice bream. If it stops moving. It's a lovely sized bream that. Not a giant, but a decent one. Wow, tiniest fish ever. What the heck is that? It's a whiting, I think. A tiny whiting though. Mm, it's also taking the hook. Yeah. Ooh. Something like that. I think it's a whiting. Although it doesn't, it doesn't kind of look like a whiting. It kind of does and doesn't. The head looks like one, but the body doesn't. It's hard to say though with small fish. You can see that there. Whiting, I think. Yeah, little little nippy teeth. Got to be whiting. Right, put that back. I don't even know what this is. It said pollock, but... Yeah, I am smelling it. I think it might be coalfish. Or coley. It is, it's a coley. Yep, definitely. I was saying, I haven't caught one of these for years. You know, you catch one. Amazing. And that was caught on the hot one, which was. Oh no, this is the ragworm one, sorry. So we put that on ragworm as well. Excellent! So we're really racking up the species tonight. We'll have a tally up later of what we've uh, caught. Just cast out, and I was just about to put the rod down, and something like something grabbed it. Squid and I just put on a fresh bit of squid. Holy cow, the species are just piling up. Must have grabbed it on the drop after I cast. 
check that out. Mackerel. some effort, the rod suddenly went off, it's been out there for like half an hour, but we've got a nice bream. Right, I'm just going to fish the one rod now. Still the green. He said it's been very, very slow since the sun came up. But it's another good sized green. Right, well, I think I'm going to pack up there. It's uh, getting a bit breezy, it's getting a bit chilly actually. So, we haven't done bad. We could have done a lot better this morning when the light came up. It's been very, very quiet. We've only had two fish in the light, and it's been light for two hours now. So, but at least we caught some, and we caught a lot of different species. The way the land is sliding into the sea slowly. <laughs> the steps are all twisting.
Right, so I thought I'd cut, get away from the sea because it's pretty loud down there and the wind's blowing quite hard now. Uh, not excessively hard, but it's noisy. So, uh, we didn't catch as much as I thought we would. I thought we'd get a lot more bream. On a big tide like this, normally it's pretty good. You know, the big tides normally produce bream because they come in a lot closer. But it wasn't to be today. They obviously aren't in the area. Or maybe they went further down, who knows. But, um, but we did catch some, so we ended up with, what did we end up with? Was it four bream? Well, four black bream, one cooch's bream, two pout, a whiting, two coalfish, and a mackerel. So that wasn't bad going, particularly for the coalfish and the whiting. Whiting I haven't seen for a few years, and I've only ever really caught two, two or three off the shore, not many. And coalfish, I haven't caught a coalfish in about 20 years. So it's been a long time. I mean, they're only little, 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 little fish, but pretty cool to see. But, um, yeah. Now I'm going to make all the way back up there, go home, have a coffee, have some breakfast, then probably go to sleep for a bit, get some energy back. <laughs>